Times have changed, days have changed. It has been five long years ever since Damien's passing. The world was hit with a major war between two countries of the East, and the war effort was in full swing. Princess Celestia and her subjects realized that this would never relieve Ponytown from bankruptcy. Will you too? I expected this conference to happen and that Ponytown's revenue has gone down recently. In all of my 1,000 years of ruling Equestria, we have never raised presses of money that inflation demanded, and the population of ponies has increased in the last decade. What do you think is the culprit? Well, Your Majesty, ever since the unfortunate passing of Damien, and the retirement of two hospital doctors at Ponytown staff, the revenue has gone down in spite of limited resources for transportation of ponies that have come to live here. Well, the only way to invest money to get Ponytown out of bankruptcy is to hire another pony to work with Jeffrey and his crew. But your majesty, that will lead Ponytown to bankruptcy. It's risky, but what other choice do you have? I would rather go out knowing that I tried my best to help show improvement, rather than giving in like a pillock. Jeffrey's crew filed into the entrance of Ponytown. Right, we're all here to show up for what reason? There's not a single tourist in sight and I'm still tired. Shh, we didn't expect to show up to hear you complain for that's what. Oh shut up you little green rat. Oh look, it's Celestia. She must have called us all here. Oh joy. Right, so I'm sorry to call you all here this early of the day. As you can see, Ponyton isn't doing so well financially. As a last resort, I have hired another pony to work along with you all. He comes from the state of Michigan and has left last night and should be arriving in the next two minutes. Here is Hayes. He is the pony that came all the way from Michigan. Hello there, Hayes. Welcome to Equestria's Pony Town. I already don't like him. Oh, be quiet. Later that night, all the ponies were sleeping in their beds at the house. However, at some point of the night, Hayes left the house. This awoke Gib, who quickly went back to sleep. I've got you now, Damien. This is gonna be your last moments before you reach the fruit market. Oh, oh, God. Gib woke deeply frightened and angered with this pony. He told the Jeffrey that later the next morning, what? Wow, that's a nightmare. What scares me is the realism. I saw everything. It's only a nightmare. They happen when they, we least expect them. I'm gonna keep an eye on him though. Sun doesn't seem to bode well with him. Gibbs' skepticism deprived him of sleep. So later that night, he went out of the house and idled into Point Town Plaza's guest hut. Okay, you can sleep here. It's getting rather late and I gotta go home to sleep. Okay, guard. Gib turned around and, and saw two ponies at the plaza. One was Haze and the other was indistinguishable. Wait, guard, come back. It's been several years since Damien's accident. It has come to my attention that the gunpowder is arriving soon. Soon? You're not planning on doing it now, are you? Not quite yet. I still want time for the ponies to accept me as one of their own. They'll never suspect foul play, so they won't expect me of anything. You're very sly. We better leave now, it's almost light. 
Indeed we shall. Good night. Gib thought it was best to not say anything that night. The next day, he and Hayes were double-heading a pony pulled passenger service to Baltimore. Gib, what are we gonna do? Don't worry, sweetie. Damien was part of our marriage trio, and I won't let Hayes get away with this. The two then headed off to Baltimore. Gib felt nervous, but hatred grew inside of him as they went on. You're a quiet one, aren't you? I'm just tired, that's all. Barely got any sleep that night. Al's thought felt nervous for her remaining husband. Gib grimaced as he felt Hayes' temperature grow cold. Soon they arrived at Baltimore. Nice trip, wasn't it? Hayes said nothing. Later the carriages were sent away and Gib and Hayes were resting in the nearby tent for visitors. So you come from Michigan, eh? That's right. I remember a pony that came from there. Miguel was his name. Princess Celestia sent him away from Equestria though, as he was too rough and almost caused a big accident. Princess Celestia has that power, you know. So what? Well, this pony, I shall say, caused a fatal accident in relation to Damien. Hayes perked up an angry look on his face. You foolish changeling. You heard from last night, didn't you? Yes, I did, and I know all about your little scheme. You want all the other ponies to like you, and then the town goes up in smoke. They're smarter than that, you know. Apparently not. Princess Celestia has designated me to work with there with them. They trust me with their lives. Princess Celestia wants you far away as possible for what I've heard. If that is so, then how come none of them suspect me of Damien's death, hmm? They sound all ignorant to me, the weak pony with all the problems. I knew that he was important to you and your wife, and that none of them would expect foul play. You'll never hurt them, not as long as I'm around. You can't stop me, you fool. The crates of gunpowder should be delivered to the plaza this very instant. I'll stop it. You shall not. <laughs> I shall destroy your precious pony town, and my gang will take over. Enjoy the guilt. Oh my word. Well, I better contact Alton and chase after him. Gib got back up on his hooves, and soon he ran back to pony town. We didn't order gunpowder crates. Well, put them over here. We'll figure out something. Oh god, I must speed up! You're going fast, but you must obey the speed limit. I don't care, just let me. Gibbs started going even faster and shot down the trail at an enormous speed. Just a few more minutes, and it'll happen. I'm at the border. Not too long now. No! God, no!